How does the Starship and Super Heavy catching mechanism come along? Why completely change the design of the Starship flaps? How to improve Starship hull construction? When will orbital Starship tests begin? So many questions, let's find out. What about it? Go for launch. Or go for launch, let's light this candle. Ignition sequence start. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there's been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates Every week we look at SpaceX's progress in Boca Chica and there's something new to see every time. The same of course goes for this week, but there's something different this time. According to Musk and his team, Starships are supposed to pioneer the dawn of modern spaceflight. SpaceX is building the largest rocket development and launch facility since the early days of the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And their progress keeps going faster and faster. What you're looking at here already is the next generation after the first orbital Starship. This is Starship 21's forward dome section being taken off the sleeving stand on which the dome itself received its ring sections. Even though Super Heavy Booster 4 and Chip 20 haven't even flown yet, SpaceX is already working on the next and maybe more complete version of their next-gen rocket. And what do you need to accelerate the progress even further? Even more infrastructure. Just north of the current high bay, SpaceX workers are breaking ground for something huge. A building with a large footprint is being constructed. SpaceX's new Super High Bay. This is where future generations of Starships and Super Heavy Boosters will be built at an even faster speed. Mauricio was up in the air as well, taking the latest pictures of what is shaping up to be a massive building. The lighter areas in the concrete left of the High Bay are where SpaceX is breaking up the ground again to start construction. Judging by the size, it's at least double the size of the older high bay that's currently being used to stack Super Heavy and Starship prototypes. It will give SpaceX lots more room to work in. At least four to six prototypes can be worked on in here once it's finished. Adding the capacity of the already existing high bay, SpaceX might be able to work on close to 10 prototypes simultaneously. Judging by how long it took SpaceX to build the first high bay, it might only take two months until first work can begin in the even bigger bay. Currently, the high bay is occupied by Booster 4. It's the super heavy booster that's supposed to lift Starship 20 into orbit. It's unclear what the SpaceX crew is working on, but Booster 4 definitely is a focus point. Work is being done here every day. Man lifts are swarming around the prototype and work is also being performed on the inside. A few weeks back, Elon Musk tweeted this picture. It shows Booster 4's aft dome before stacking as seen from above. This is what the workers in the high bay are likely still busy with. It's just one section of a highly complex booster. Having 29 and later 32 Raptor engines work together is not an easy task. Each needs fuel, oxidizer, electrics, sensors, data connections and hydraulics. Each requires its own plumbing and this creates a web of pipes and cables. All these connections need to work 100% reliable. This is one of the most challenging parts of the booster and it will likely also be one of the most significant opportunities for problems. Meanwhile, at the launch site, the SpaceX workforce is busy with several exciting projects. The whole place still is a maze of sites. Each one is more important than the last, and all of them are needed for the orbital flight phase. The fuel farm, arguably the ground equipment heart of every rocket launch, is almost finished now. GSE tanks 7 and 8 are still at the construction site, 7 is almost completely finished, and 8 is in the middle of the assembly phase. After they are finished and brought to the launch site, the major component of the orbital fuel farm is finally finished. The orbital launch stand is receiving more and more complexity every day. It's almost entirely covered with scaffolding and it's recently been painted grey. The fuel connection between the orbital fuel farm and the tower is finally being laid down into the ground. Once finished, the fuel farm will be connected to the orbital launch tower, enabling SpaceX to actually fuel a starship sitting on the orbital launch stand. And to be able to transfer the fuel into the Starship properly, SpaceX has decided to fuel the Starships from the side, a classical quick disconnect arm. And those are not new inventions. 
Quick Disconnect Arms have been around for a long time. Here you can see several Quick Disconnect Arms working at Pad 39A and for a Saturn V launch. They fuel the rocket and provide it with power and data connections and once the rocket is ready for liftoff, the arm can just be retracted. And SpaceX is doing something similar with Starships. A large arm will fuel the Starship and swing back once it's done its job. These hinges on the tower are likely where the component will be connected. And SpaceX, of course, is already working on all of this at the same time as well. Right in the middle of the launch site pad, which by now is barely visible at all, SpaceX workers are assembling three components further and further. Sled, chopsticks and quick disconnect arm. Now, that sounds more strange than it actually is. The sled will move alongside the launch support tower itself to give the catch mechanism the ability for vertical movement. This will be needed to follow the booster while catching it out of mid-air and for stacking and lifting purposes. The chopsticks, acting like little T-Rex arms for the tower, will catch the boosters and starships while they fly down next to the building. And finally, the quick disconnect fueling arm, which we already talked about. It will be mounted to these hinges on the tower and it will enable the tower to provide fuel to starships and super heavy boosters right after they've been placed on the orbital launch stand. All these systems have two main reasons. To enable the rocket to be reusable and to have a speedy turnaround time. Both are absolutely essential for SpaceX and the Starship program. As you can see in the close-up view, the whole construction is almost ready for installation on the launch support tower by now. The chopsticks responsible for the catch itself have received their hinges by now. The very tips are still missing and some sort of locking mechanism is missing as well. It's unclear how the catch mechanism will fix the boosters and starships in place once the catch is confirmed. In theory, it would not even need such a mechanism, but as always, it's hard to tell. The sled has been joined with the first arm piece as well. As predicted, it's being connected in an up-facing position. This will enable it to reach around one corner of the launch support tower. It will likely run along rails going up and down on the side of the building. Finally, the fueling quick disconnect arm by now has received the large hinges. As said, those already have their counterparts installed on the tower. Plumbing is still missing and the mechanism to actuate the arm, but that shouldn't take long either. Over from SpaceX 3D Creation Eccentric has made an animation showing the different components working together to give you a better picture. Well done, over. What do you think? Will the T-Rex chopsticks receive claws to be able to actually grab the rockets after the catch? As always, tell me in the comments. Next up, we'll talk Starship design changes and significant construction upgrades to future Starships. The design is getting refinement again. Stay tuned. The Y family needs your support. Give the video a like, subscribe and share it with your friends on Twitter or Facebook to show the YouTube algorithm that you appreciate the content. Looking for a more direct way of support? Become a Patreon or YouTube member by clicking the join button right under the video and get some awesome perks. Gain access to our Discord server where you can meet me and the rest of the community or get a completely ad-free release of each and every episode provided just for channel members. Or do you know about the Y Warehouse? Shop for your next Starship shirt, hoodie or cap and look as awesome as you feel. Links can be found in the description, you rock! So SpaceX hasn't even flown a single orbit with a Starship yet, but the design needed for the task is already being changed again. This is not due to SpaceX not knowing what they're doing. Instead, it's the engineering team finding out more and more about how to actually build a Starship. Even though it might not seem like much, these pictures by Mary, aka Boca Chica Gal for NASA spaceflight are significant. They show a nose cone inside one of the construction tents and to those who are following my channel closely, this cone will look different immediately. It's so smooth, right? So much more sophisticated looking than the older version. Looking at a picture from our new Y photographer Luis Rodriguez, taken of Starship 15 at the construction site, we can already clearly see the difference. Welcome to the next level of Starship hull construction. In direct comparison, the difference is stunning. On the left we have the old way of constructing a Starship nose cone and on the right we see what it will look like from here on. One single metal sheet compared to four separately joined pieces before. This reduces the number of welds needed on the nose dramatically and it enables the welding robot to just do long and much cleaner welds all the way from the top to the end of the curvature. 
This kind of hull construction refinement will not only be limited to the nose cone alone. Musk has repeatedly stated that you'll barely be able to see the welds between the different segments on the final versions of Starships. Starships are still in a very crude form and we're now slowly seeing the transition from an early prototype towards a more sophisticated test candidate construction. Musk has also spilled some more beans on an upcoming significant design change regarding the flaps. The new design rotates forward flaps more to the leeward side of the hull and further forward to improve the moment arm, maybe roughly 120 degrees apart. And Eric has already visualized it for all of us as well. Make sure to check out his Twitter account at ErgXSpace for weekly renders. He translated Elon's tweet into his new render perfectly. The difference can be seen instantly. To give the Starship more control when in skydive mode and while transitioning in and out of it, the forward flaps will be moved further into the leeward side of the hull. This positions them away from the heat shield side and raises the effectiveness of the flaps in return. Less heat shield protection will be needed, making the TPS tile construction less complex. Musk only talked about the forward flaps though. It stands to be seen if this change can also be incorporated into the aft flaps. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about one last fundamental change at the launch site. Starship 20 has moved. SpaceX is preparing to continue the test campaign. Ship 20 and Booster 4 still need their proof testing done. Ambient pressure tests, cryogenic tests, static fires, the whole deal. By now it's been placed on suborbital test pad B and is currently being prepared for the ground test campaign. We have some exciting cryo proof and static fire tests coming up shortly, which will determine if Ship 20 is the one to perform the orbital flight or if SpaceX will have to use Ship 21, which as said is already in production as well. Tests are announced for today between 5 pm and 11 pm local time and for the next two days. Keep a lookout and turn on La Padre, we might be seeing the first ever orbital Starship ground test campaign very soon. Let's save the world, right? But first, let's order something on Amazon, fly to a vacation and turn up the AC because it's hot today, right? Listen, I have the same problem. We all do. Most of us want to do something to better ourselves, make things right again. But then we also want to live our lives. Is there an easy solution? Musk wants to build starships to make us multiplanetary. He wants to do this because he believes that the window of opportunity for such an endeavor might be limited in time. There are ways out of this dilemma and today's sponsor Ren is one of them. Ren is a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint and then they give you a price tag to offset that carbon footprint as much as possible by funding projects that plant trees and protect the rainforest. It's an easy way to put your money where your mouth is and start doing something about the climate crisis. By answering a few questions about your lifestyle, you can find out your carbon footprint and how you can reduce it. No one can reduce their carbon footprint to zero, so you can offset what you have left after reducing yourself. REN posts every receipt they get for their support of all the projects. You can research all the projects yourself. Everything is transparent. You can also receive monthly updates from the tree planting, rainforest protection and other projects you support. No one can end the climate crisis on their own, but together we can make a difference. It will take a lot to end the climate crisis and you can start helping today by learning more on REN.co. I've partnered with REN.co to protect 5 extra acres of rainforest for the first 100 people who sign up using my referral link in the description. And yes, I'm signed up too. Today's supporter shoutout goes to Patrick Marx, Mark Lawrence, Frank, Pseudonym and many others. You rock so much. Without you and countless others we wouldn't be producing this content, so the entire team's gratitude is yours. Make sure to hop on our supporter exclusive discord to join more than a thousand spaceflight enthusiasts and to give me the chance to thank you in person. Today's team shoutout goes to Luis Rodriguez. He's our new dedicated reporter at Starbase Texas and as soon as he's settled in, he'll provide the Y family and the rest of the world with daily pictures and videos directly from the site. For the first time in the channel's history, we'll be able to call the shots and direct the camera lens towards those things we want to analyze next. Thank you Luis, we're glad to have you aboard. The Y family is growing the most significant opportunities for plop. The fuel farm. Plop. For plops. Come on. The chopsticks reasonab reasonably large. <laughs> Grab the, 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 the buckets. Grab the rockets after the catch. It's not that hard to say. 
but the design needed for the task, the task. Not simultaneously? simultaneously? No. no. 